Okay, ladies, this screencast is going to take us through the Revolutionary War. Um, we're going to start by looking at the strengths and weaknesses of both England and the colonies um, kind of going into this war. So in the beginning, um, if you were looking at England's advantages, they are that they have more money, they have more resources, um, military supplies, they have a larger population, they have more overall military experience. I mean, they're the one of the world's largest superpowers at this point. Um, they have a large army. They have the most powerful navy in the world. So they sound like a tough group to beat, and they are. Um, their disadvantages are that they were far less familiar with the land that they were fighting on, since it's being fought in the British colonies, um, and a lot of the British soldiers are from England. Um, so they're very far from home base, and at the same time, the fact that a part of their military forces are the German Hessians, um, this means that many of their soldiers are just fighting for a paycheck, and they aren't as dedicated to the cause overall. Um, and that's going to kind of play into the colonial advantages, because the British disadvantages are essentially going to be the colonial American advantages, and vice versa. So in terms of the colonist advantage, they obviously have home field advantage, which means they know the land they are fighting on, and at the same time, they are very dedicated to the cause. They're highly motivated to achieve victory, which they um, see as being equal to their freedom. So it's high stakes for them. Um, their disadvantages are that they do not have everything England has. They lack supplies, resources, money, um, they have a small overall population, they have no navy, they have a poorly trained army, um, and overall inexperienced military officers. And at the same time, they also have a divided population since we still have the inner conflict between the Loyalists and the Patriots, so that kind of splits their efforts in two. Let's talk about some of the early battles. Um, in the early parts of this war, the British show success um, for multiple battles. They are successful in the beginning. It, not, quite frankly, on paper, it's not surprising that they would be successful, um, since their out advantages kind of outweigh the colonial advantages. Um, the Continental Army is pushed out of New York and New Jersey and into Pennsylvania. Um, England actually was able to seize uh, New York City in the Battle of Long Island. But during the Battle of Long Island, um, which you know is New York, I want to highlight a, a man named Nathan Hale. He's a celebrated patriot. Um, he was a colonial spy working for the Continental Army, but he was captured in this battle, and he will be hanged by the British for his crime. Um, but his last words were, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. And that's a really powerful statement, especially the words my country. It kind of shows that not all colonists, but many colonists are really now viewing America is their homeland and the reason they are fighting um, and feel it's worth protecting. So we do celebrate Nathan Hale for that. I want to talk a little bit about our commanding general, um, George Washington, um, since we know that the Second Continental Congress put him in charge. He is a good leader um, in that he is tactical and he's well respected. He's not really the best politician, to be honest, <laughs> um, but he is a respected general, um, and he's able to rally support amongst his soldiers. He does have mixed success in battles. Um, obviously, he had some early losses, as we discussed in the previous bullet, but um, he was victorious against some Hessians in the Battle of Trenton. And this picture is kind of famous. It shows Washington crossing the Delaware River. Um, this it, the Battle of Trenton is the event in which Washington snuck across the Delaware River, um, launching a surprise attack on this, these British soldiers who are, again, really Germans. Um, 
But the reason this battle is well known is Washington, it's not really depicted well in this picture. This picture is not really fully accurate, to be honest, but it's just very famous. Um, Washington actually chose to cross the Delaware in the middle of the night. Uh, and it also, it was on Christmas night, December 25th. Um, thus, the uh, British forces were probably celebrating Christmas, probably drinking some, eating some food, um, sleeping at the end of the day. And they're very much caught off guard. Um, by this surprise attack. So it's a very big, like, moral boost to the colonial side, um, the Battle of Trenton. Now, the Battle of Saratoga will be an overall turning point of the war. Um, it's going to be a huge victory for the colonial side. Over 6,000 British soldiers um, are forced to surrender, which is just a big win. And with such success, the colonists will be able to prove that they are actually having a shot at defeating England. Um, it's not just a long shot anymore. Like, there's a actual chance they could win this. And that's going to secure a very important alliance with the French um, for the remainder of the war. So France will ally with us, um against the British for the rest of the war, that is a big deal um, because, quite frankly, we would not have won without them. I don't want to say a whole lot about um, Valley Forge, but this is kind of a uh, really long uh, winter at the Cotton Army's camp that they're kind of waiting out. Um, I believe between 1777 and 78, you don't have to memorize those years, but you're in Pennsylvania, and there's just not a whole lot of money in the Continental Army for the troops. Um, again, our, you know, disadvantage is we lack resources, and that includes money. Um, so the soldiers are trying to survive in very harsh conditions, and it was just one of the worst winters ever. Um, it was very harsh, very cold. Um, little to no supplies, again, for the soldiers, so thousands of them will actually die at the camp. Um, Washington kind of emerges as a hero because he's able, you know, to use the money he does have. He doesn't have enough money to feed and, you know, supply everyone, but he is able to help as many troops as he could while they're kind of waiting for French reinforcements and supplies to arrive from France. Um, and during this um, winter at Valley Forge, none of the colonial troops desert um, or leave the army, they say, and suffer through the conditions until help arrives. So that just kind of shows that Washington is a uniting force behind, um, the, you know, that decision to stay on the colonist side. I want to quickly just touch on the war at sea and then the war in the south. Um, not a whole lot to say overall, but um, at sea we do fight the British in the Caribbean and elsewhere. Um, this is really only because we have the assistance from France because remember we didn't start this war with the Navy. Um, so they are pivotal in helping us on some of the Caribbean islands um, and just in the water in general. Now think about what France hopes to gain out of this alliance. Um, perhaps they want to regain some of their previously lost territory since they lost so much land in the French and Indian War um, to England. So just kind of keep that in mind at the end of this um, in terms of why they're helping us. But in terms of the war in the South, that just refers to the war being fought in some of the more um, southern colonies. Um, the British want to turn the fighting south because they hope to be successful um, there due to a larger Tory or loyalist population that would cause more division between us and um, other colonists. So they are able, um, England is able to capture both Savannah, Georgia, as well as Charleston, South Carolina. Um, so overall, even though we were having some victories, England was successful in the southern colonies. Eventually, colonial forces are able to push um, the British into Virginia. 
um, a little, you know, still the south, but a little more north overall out of Georgia and South Carolina. Um, the generals that are able to do this are Washington and also another colonial general. I have his name on the screen for you, um, Nathaniel Green. They are able to completely surround the British at the Battle of Yorktown. At the Battle of Yorktown, the, the British are under General Cornwallis's leadership. I have his name on the screen as well. And again, the British end up being completely surrounded by colonial forces, including the French, who are able to cut the British off at sea. Um, this is where the British will give the final surrender of this war because this is the final battle fought in the American Revolution. And the colonists have emerged victorious because England is ready to start compromising. So obviously a war doesn't end until you have a treaty. The treaty that ends the American Revolution is the Treaty of Paris, 1783. Um, treaty negotiations took multiple years, but eventually this treaty is finally signed between Great Britain and America, officially ending the American Revolution. Um, some of the stipulations are that Great Britain is officially and formally going to recognize American independence. So we are officially independent from England because they acknowledge this independence in this treaty. Um, in terms of territory distribution, England got to keep Canada, which is going to be very much to the dismay of France, who was probably hoping to get some of their um, Canadian territory back. But in, you know, the war is not really fought in Canada, and um, England's just not willing to give up that land as a result of this war. And quite honestly, we're not willing to keep fighting over it. So sorry to France. They're going to be a little disappointed, a little upset with us, but they do not walk away with Canada in this scenario because England gets to keep that. But we do get our original 13 states as well as all land east of the Mississippi River, except for um, New Orleans. Notice that Spain has regained some control of Spanish Florida, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, okay? Um, they had a minor role in helping us in this war. They're going to be able to maintain everything west of the river, but they did earn some of their Spanish ter territory in Florida back as well. And that is the end of our notes today. So I have a couple of just general things to go over with y'all on Monday. Um, very small little wrap up topics, but y'all have pretty much all the notes to begin studying for your overall unit two exam next week. So please write down any questions you have regarding the screencast and I will see you all um, after this weekend.